Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is another man that gets to work with Jerem Jordan on a regular basis now. He is BYU's all-time leading scorer and BYU TV basketball analyst Tyler Hawes. On the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, Ty, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Well, I'm doing all right. Trying to recover from last night, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. How are you guys? Yeah, and that was just the pre-half and post-game show, uh, let alone the game, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know, Tyler, as, as somebody that's worked alongside Jaron for more than seven years now, for you, I think it's been like, what, like seven days? Four games. <laughs> Four <laughs> yeah. games. Yeah. What's the best and worst thing about working with Jerem Jordan? Best and worst. Um, well, Jerem on camera is all smiles, you know, hair done really nice, top button done up. You get him off camera and, you know, I've played for some, I've played for some pretty intense coaches. I'm, I'm getting some, some heat and, and some intense coaching stuff off camera. So <laughs> I'm trying to work through that, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Jerem's He's a pro. It's all right. Fun. You said that uh, you're you're working hard to get over last night. BYU battles all the way back multiple times to tie the game against Boise State. They could never quite climb over the hill. And today we're asking, is it just one loss last night, or is there a bigger storyline at play with this BYU basketball team? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some alarming things, um, but. Like I, I said this last night, I don't feel like it's broken. I feel like the things that BYU needs to fix, they're, they're fixable. I mean, we, you have to come out with some fire and some fight. Really, I mean, they showed that for 32 minutes last night. The first eight minutes of the game, we, I mean, BYU just laid an egg. We, we, we got we to gotta take the fight to, to the other teams and... Um, yeah, it was just disappointed in, in the way that we started and, and the fire and toughness that, um, that, that was missing. And, and Boise State, I mean, teams are hungry and they, they want to come into the Marriott Center and, and, and beat you. And so you have to know that coming in. I, I know BYU is aware of those things. It, it, they, they just have to manufacture some of that energy and that fight right from the beginning of the game. Are we still in the figure out what team this is mode? Because last year was this like three year build, all these seniors, all these guys, right? Jake Toulson, you know, it's like a hired gun to come in and return to BYU. That all made sense that that would be awesome. This team is a hodgepodge of talent, but it's still figuring itself out. Like Brandon Averitt doesn't seem like the player we were hoping he'd be quite yet. Um, Connor Harding still developing. Is it just going to take a little bit longer? I, I think we wanted it maybe a little faster. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, the coach Pope is playing lots of guys and, and I think that's a sign of still trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what the roles are on this team. Um, I do, I do think guys are kind of coming to into their own, you know, Matt harms uh, had a great night last night. It was fun to see him. You called uh, that. Yeah, I called it. No, that's right. Um, but other guys definitely need to step up. There, there's we got to find a, a couple other scores to to help us. And you know, guys are gonna teams are gonna start keying on Alex Barcelo, and he's had an amazing start to the year. But they're gonna start doubling him and trying to get the ball out of his hands. And so other guys are gonna have to be ready and step up. Who is the most likely to step into the second and third leading score roles? Because right now, it's Alex Parcello clearly at almost 20 points per game. Then Matt Harms at 10, Averitt at 8, and then Connor Harding at 7. So who, who, are the, who are the next guys for two and three in, in points per game? Yeah, to me, it has to be Matt Harms inside. Um, Got to have an inside threat. Uh, you know, I, I love the pick and roll stuff that they do with him and, and just throw it up right to the rim. Um, and then if he can knock down a couple outside shots, I mean, he's going to be a 15, 15 point score a night guy. And he, he needs to be that for the Cougs. Um, I think Connor Harding definitely can come in. And I mean, he has a ton of experience. He played a big role last year and he, he's a guy that, you know, will play any, any role that's given him. That's his mindset. Um, but he's capable of scoring. He's, he's capable of being that double figure guy. And, uh, I'd like to see him grow into that role. 
The man has scored more points than Jimmer Fredette in a BYU uniform. His name is Tyler Haas. He's with us on BYU Sports Nation. It's all about making the tournament. The goal is clear for BYU basketball, getting to the tournament for the first time, technically because last year didn't turn into a tournament scenario in a very long time, Tyler. How close to becoming uh, an NCAA tournament team is this current squad? Well, they still have a long ways to go. Uh, the talent is definitely there. They have all of the tools of being a, a tournament type team, um, but they, they still have a lot of growing to do. And, and it's, it's early in the year. I would say um, there's still a ton of basketball left to play. There's gonna be plenty of opportunities for this team to, to prove themselves. And, and really in the next couple of weeks, I mean, uh, all hope is not lost because of, of last night. And uh, I think the locker room, I mean, they talk about the, having the best locker room in America. Like the guys in there are playing for each other. Like, I, I don't think anyone has their own personal agenda, um, but it, it's, it's finding the right type of flow and the right type of rhythm. Um, and you got to be playing well at the right time. I, I would say last year, even last year, I mean, uh, last year was a very special, special team, but they had their growing pains and their struggles early on. And um, they just need to, they need to stay together. You know, guys can't go sideways, um, but I, I think everyone's focused and, and determined to, to keep getting better every day to work towards being that, that tournament type team. I've got a little bit of concern because in the two, perhaps, I don't know, uh, games where there was some real length and athleticism, which is the type of team you'd probably see in the NCAA tournament, right? Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. in the first, uh, definitely in the second round, that BYU kind of struggled. Granted, losing by 26 to USC was an outlier, but here's Boise State. So is it as simple as what you said at the beginning? Hey, just don't go down 14 nothing. <laughs> That, that's definitely, I think, part of it. You, you can't let a team go on that big of a run. You know, Jeremy, we've, we've talked about it numerous times. Like, you have to find ways to keep scoring. Like, we, we've seen runs with teams um, this year where, they, you know, they'll go on a 10-0 run and, and we'll go scoreless for seven or eight minutes. Like, guys have to find a way to keep scoring, whether that's inside, getting to the foul line, um, but, you know, I, I think uh, if, if they can fix a couple of those, a couple of those things, they're, they're going to be totally fine. Alex Barcelo told me last night, it's time to turn the page after we grieve tonight because Utah is coming up on Saturday. You have to have a very short memory is how he termed it. And it, it shouldn't be hard because of the rivalry that exists with Utah. How do you like the Cougars match up with the Utes specifically this year, roster to roster? Yeah, I, I really like the matchup. Um, I, I think Utah definitely has some new guys that have come in and, and are starting to play well. They've only played two games, but I, I think last game they had six guys in, in double figures. Um, lots of weapons on their end. Uh, this Ryland Jones uh, gave BYU buckets last year. He was tough um, on both ends of the floor. He's really smart, um, kind of leads the charge for them. But then you have... You know, Timmy Allen, you know, athletic, smart, um, and, and just a poised, experienced guy. And so, uh, but, we, you know, our length and size definitely matches up well with them. Um, and uh, I want us to, I, I think this team, the first eight minutes are as important as any other part of the game. If we can come out and start, you know, really, really well, um, we're going we're gonna to be fine. You know, going back to, to Jerem's point, um, talking about the length and the size of, of teams, this team has some length. Uh, I, I would like to see BYU play more on attack, right? Coach, Coach Rose and, and the coaches that I've worked with, whenever you're playing against a longer, more athletic team, which BYU is going to see you know, the, the rest of this year and hopefully in the tournament, you got to go right at them. Go right at these shot blockers. You can't be, you can't play on your heels and play hesitant uh, when when you're going against length. Like you know, we talked last night, Jerem. There was a, a play by Spencer Johnson. He went right at Alston, and we were surprised. He got in the lane and 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 had a nice little jumper in the lane. Got to play on attack. And I think if we can get in that mindset of playing downhill, playing on attack, um, uh, that's definitely going to help.
Speaking of attack, that's been the issue between BYU and Utah at times. <laughs> Physically attacking each other over the years with some fun, uh, you know, kerfuffles. What's uh, maybe your favorite memory, not of an attack per se, but of uh, playing against Utah? Yeah, man, there's uh, a lot of emotion <clears throat> that, that goes into that Are game. Are you getting choked uh, up right now? Getting choked up, yeah. <laughs> no, um Definitely, there's definitely heated moments in every every one of those games, and you got to keep your cool. You got to stay the course. Um, but my, I guess my favorite memory was my freshman year um, playing at BYU. Uh, it was, um, it was. I think it was in February. It was during the coaches versus cancer stuff. So we wore pink uniforms, had pink shoes. Like coach, you know. Coach Rose was coming off everything with his cancer stuff. And so there, there was like an added intensity and emotion to the game. And, and we just came out and we, we blitzed them. And it, it, was, it was awesome. The Marriott Center was crazy. And, you know, they had a really, really good team. And they, they were coming after us. But uh, it's fun to win, man. Fun to win that game. Do you remember how many points you scored in that game? Uh, I... I, w I would say 10 or 11. 15. I had, I had two dunks. Wow. Yeah, you did, your best dunk at BYU was in that game. Yeah, <laughs> And you and you and uh, James Fredette combined for 51. So there you go. Wow. He had 36. He took 23 shots. So, yeah. Hey, if you combined our points that freshman year, I mean, that that's a pretty good stat. <laughs> <laughs> I got the coach to coattails of Jimmer. <laughs> Tyler, you mentioned the Marriott Center. When that place is rocking, it definitely gets into the collective heads of an opponent. Whereas last night, there aren't many fans there. And this was brought up during the broadcast by Blaine Fowler that, man, this is when BYU is making a run and they tied the game, this place would be going nuts right now. But th yeah. there are no fans. So how do you overcome something like that when you don't have the usual Marriott Center magic provided by at least, you know, 12 to 15,000 fans going nuts? Right. It's a challenge that I would say everyone is feeling across America. I mean, the, you know, the energy, the adrenaline that you get from, from crowds, not only at the beginning of the game, but yeah, like you're saying in big moments where, um, you know, the game's tight, you're going back and forth, you feed off that, that um, the crowd's energy and there's no better place to play than, than the Marriott center when it's, when it's rocking. Um, and so it, it's a challenge that, that everyone's dealing with, and you've got to find a way to, to manufacture that energy, whether it's coming from the bench, like, you know, guys that are, that are coming in in limited minutes. When your number's called, you've got to be ready to go, and you've got to bring that fight and energy some, somehow. You've got to find it deep in, inside you to, to bring it because, yeah, the, the energy in the building is just different for sure. Okay, Tyler, let's take a moment and just consult with Spence here. So we're going to do the second screen experience mm -hmm, for the Utah mm -hmm, game. Mm -hmm. um, Tyler and I are going to do this on the BYU TV app during the game. So, Spencer, you did the second screen experience for North Alabama football versus BYU. What, what do you recommend we know, do, not do? Be ready to talk a lot. <laughs> I'm always ready to do that. That is true. <laughs> and that. bring something to, uh, you know – Help your throat when it gets sore because it will get sore. You'll be talking so much. I don't know. Maybe uh, the producers will work in a break or two for you during the basketball game because we didn't really get that during the football Tyler, game. I'm leaning on Tyler to carry this thing. I don't know what Tyler <laughs> yes, has planned. Yes, it is. So, oh. Ty, maybe, maybe that's for you. Bring bring some throat lozenges, uh, you know, some honey Please lemon tea. Uh huh. Make sure that the vocal cords are all loosened up because both of you are going to talk a lot. That's my advice. There you go. Okay, noted. <laughs> Tyler, great to talk to you, man. Hopefully, BYU can turn this thing around against the Utes of all teams. Yeah, come on. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, guys. You got it. Tyler Haas on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. My life's better.